I'd happily get through all that. No, and you know, and then I look at you know, here you are, you've continued on a mission through probably one of the world's biggest crises, and then your daughter starts a business. I mean, how cool is that, right? And, and, you know, what, what's amazing is, is that you're going to be this great mentor for her, but th there are going to be times you want to catch her. But then sometimes you sit there and you go, you know what, maybe I think I'm going to let her kind of stumble so she'll figure it out. Right. Yeah. But you're going to be there to kind of guide that fall rather than um, her, you know, falling completely all the way and getting so hurt she can't get back up. But, you, but you're going to let her have those moments. And this is what I tell people. I hope that your challenges in life from this point, from the day you graduate from college, I hope your challenges are as more gainful as they are painful. But you've summed it up there though. You gotta, have them. you gotta have them. Unfortunately, right? too many people stop you from falling. So you're not learning. They'll say, so I let her run and I tell you, I say to her, everything is, has to be positive. So she'll come with her homework and say, I can't do this. I'll say, you can, but let's break it down. Because no problem is as big as you think. It's always lots of little problems that you can break down one by one. Unfortunately, in this world, we are we are too protective, especially of our children. Is that don't do that because don't do that because now, don't get me wrong. Don't get your people. Don't get your children run into the streets and the roads. That that obviously has to be taught. But we take that into our into the, the entrepreneurial world. We take that into the school world. And and this is the problem. School world will say how many times you hear children say. My teacher said I wouldn't make that. Why? How do you know? You're holding the children back. It has to be. Go and try it. Go and try it. And, and that's the key. And this is why it's just, you know, and we need to embrace that and, and, and learn. And, and it's just the way the world is at the moment. It is. You know, the world mm -hmm. is a dangerous place. It really is. I'm not going to lie to anybody. I've, I travel 85% of the year up until covid um, and, and I'm count my blessings that while I was gone, I didn't come in contact with it and count my blessings. Nick didn't either because he was in Italy just before all of that mess hit. And so, but, but at the end of the day, um, I don't think it's always luck. We can all say it's luck, but I think there's a lot of planning, a lot of preparing and a, a lot of persistence, right? And so, you know what? You said something. Ben, you said something that just hit me, um, and it was we can. People say they can't, right? Yeah. And that was actually a four-letter word in my house that we would get spanked over. That was the four-letter word we'd get spanked over. Um, and the um, somebody told me the other day, you can either can or you can't. And either way, you're right. Mm -hmm. If you say I can or I can't, either way, you're right. It's your choice. But like you said, there's sometimes there's so many little problems stacked. You can't focus through them. You can't, I don't know which one to work on first, but you know what? Just pick one and do it. Like yeah. I'm, stuck in the, I'm stuck in a problem right. with myself, right. but somebody helped me refocus today. Right. And go, Kim, you got way over here because you got too passionate about it. So you're way over here. No wonder you're depressed. And so Ben, what you're doing is good because you're helping people refocus what need, what, where their priorities are rather than where their heart is. And that's what happens sometimes. And, it's 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 and solving all those problems, we have a lot of bots available right now. And that's why we have ours uh, joining us oh, and discussing. Yeah. With we and we have a uh, demo uh, today. Welcome, Arsh. Welcome to and, uh, Arsh, your startup entrepreneur, what are some advice you have for uh, some startups going through COVID and, and coming out? What are some advice you would give as an entrepreneur? Yeah, so uh, uh, it's a very different, uh, difficult, and uh, uh, completely unseen situation. Uh, no one of us has uh, seen the situation before. And I think this is a good opportunity uh, for organizations and startups to consolidate things, uh, to get things right, to get the house in order, uh, prepare, and uh, uh, leverage the opportunity to make uh, the products right, uh, align their products uh, to the strategy, aim on organizational goals, and at the same time, prepare uh, for getting out to the market once again, once things are, uh, are good and they are in place. So put the right marketing strategies, uh, understand how things have changed and uh, tweak your strategies to suit uh, the current situation. Oh yeah, tweak your, and I think that's what Ben's been kind of saying too. You know, you have to focus on what you're doing, but tweak your strategies. I mean, that's- yeah, You have to be agile, you have to be agile. Uh, you have to be flexible uh, in uh, your strategies. Uh, 
thinking and how to go to the market and now in this different situation because a lot of things will change definitely hey ben are you familiar with chatbots chatbots chat yeah 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 chatbots that's yeah. what arch does he he builds um and designs chatbots for uh websites and I've, i put him on a challenge now i want my chatbots to go out and negotiate with other chatbots <laughs> <laughs> But isn't it interesting that a lot of entrepreneurial things come from when you're told you can't do something? So, so you know, for example, they will tell you, Ash, that you can't you can't improve on chatbots out there. And that, to me, it's like anything in the world. We're, we're being told we can't do things. I mean, look, at you know, rather than being told we can't do something, why aren't we told we can do it better or we can do it right or we can do it, we can improve it. Exactly. You know, that's, that's what is very important, uh, doing things right, uh, getting it into the right track, understanding what uh, the user requirements are hitting that particular track. So that is useful. We need to uh, build things which are productive, which are efficient, and uh, which actually cater to the problems, real world problems, which are there and not be just become any solutions. I mean, and, and, I think, uh, and I think uh, why, why we are not able to follow those things because we are very busy in our own day-to-day -day life and we have a lot of things to be done, a lot of pressures going around. Maybe this is the good time that we all are at home. Maybe we have more amount of time spending. Uh, yeah. Me and Kim don't have, but generally we have a lot of time time uh, during COVID. And uh, I mean, but but we don't have that strategy. Uh, we don't have that ever note or we don't practice what to do and what not to do and what we've achieved so far. So yeah. I generally keep uh, this diary and I, I just follow my uh, list of work to do. And then if I don't do it, then I carry back for the next day. But right. still, I have I was listening to the conversation earlier and uh, it was sorry to cut off. Yeah, I was listening to the conversation earlier and it was uh, very importantly mentioned that we need to drill down things. Uh, we need to like, uh, if we're not getting uh, things right, then there's something which we're doing wrong maybe. So uh, Aligning to a strategy, higher goals, everything is important, but uh, yeah. it's quite important to drill down things, understand it at a lower level and uh, match it up to the strategy. So uh, break things apart, focus on smaller things and things will happen. But do you, know, do you know what, do you know what Ankit does, Ash, as well? Yeah. He puts things on that list that he has done then just so he can cross them off. That's what That's he does. That's a good idea, yeah. I know, I know it, yeah. But you're right. We, we're such a negative place that the world is. Eh? We were far more positive. And if you told you, it's like it's like the current situation in the world now. We're being told we can't go and do this. We can't go and do that. People are going to do it. Mm -hmm. They're going to do it. See if they can and prove people wrong. Not we're not educating people enough. We're not saying don't go out because you you you. This is the possibility of catching the virus. You know, we're telling people you can't go out. Well, I can yeah. because I, I can physically open my door and I can go out. <laughs> don't tell me I can't go out. What you should be saying is don't go out because it's a far different mindset. Exactly. It's a bit, it's a bit yeah, of a rule behind that. You are, there's a, uh, a rule of inertia and uh, people fall, like everyone uh, does follow that. And there has to be a positive implementation of the inertia you have. So, yeah. Inertia. Ben, as you said that, uh, I mean, this is a tough time, but uh, but you know that uh, th there's a series coming up between England and West Indies uh, during this COVID, and I don't know how they will manage it out. <laughs> I don't mind as long as we beat the Windies. I mean, I, 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 grew, <laughs> I, I, I grew up during I grew up during the 80s and 90s when we get stuff five nil every mm -hmm. year, yeah. and you had yeah. the likes of Malcolm Marshall, Courtney yeah. Walton. And they they just fought. so so as long as we win, I don't mind how it goes ahead. Is this win cricket? And then and, and Ben, I, I would like to invite you on Saturday, uh, Saturday one p.m. EST. We have a cricket show. Uh, our spin off the time, and we are we are also uh, getting Ajay Jadeja, uh, famous Indian cricketer, on the show. Oh, so that's great. Join it out, yeah. I still, I still play cricket. Yeah. I need well, a bot that tells me how to play cricket. I need a cricket bot. Yeah, ben, ben, I, 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 do you aware about Ajay Jadeja? Sorry? I'm definitely aware about Ajay Jadeja. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know, yeah, I know Ajay. Yeah, yeah, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Because <laughs> Nick is always uh, Nick is always confused between Shahrukh Khan and Sachin Tandulkar. He, he who's is Shadow? not aware about who's Shahrukh Khan. Who's Shahrukh Khan? Who's Shahrukh Khan? Nobody in America knows who he is. We've gone through this. Mm -hmm. I know, but, but um, you know, uh, Ben Arsh does the creations of uh, chatbots for. Maybe your daughter might need one for her um, her business that she has. Um, you never know. 
the, the, yeah. I think the chat bots are pretty cool. You know, I'm, I'm more of a, I like to get on the phone and talk to people, but the more I've been playing with them, the more I kind of like, this is kind of fun. I open them up and <laughs> play with them. Don't, don't we have a COVID-19 chat box on our website? Yes, we do. We have a COVID. Yeah. And that Marsh did, I think Arsh helped us do that or did that for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Ours, uh, gave Ours? Us that, uh, API and we implemented on IBM TV. Uh, but uh, but before we discuss, I think we should do a quick demo about uh, what what is the voice chatbot all about. Sure. So Ar let's start the demo and let's see how uh, the bot operates and works. So would you like yeah. to discuss about how the bot works before we start questioning the bot? Yeah, sure. I'll uh, I'll give a brief uh, uh, background about it. So uh, this is very different times, and we thought it's very important for people to have the right information uh, sourced from the right uh, areas and the right governing bodies. So uh, because a lot of misinformation was going around in the world on uh, different sort of digital channels and people getting confused. So we have sourced content from uh, bodies uh, which are uh, uh, which are uh, known all over the world. Uh, we have sourced content from WHO. We've got specific instances uh, for uh, different uh, geographies. So for US, uh, the bot is powered by content from CDC and WHO. For U UK, it's powered by NHS and uh, WHO. Similarly, for India, we've got uh, content from Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and uh, WHO and so on. So we try to uh, uh, make it uh, uh, intuitive, informative, and easy to use, so that uh, it can be uh, uh, it can uh, information can uh, be sent, uh, be received by people all across the uh, world where it is being implemented, and uh, uh, they have got the right information. Great. So should we start the demo? Yeah, sure. We can do that. Just while it's starting that though, uh, uh, just going back to what Kimberly said. All these are to do, it, people must remember this, is to produce that conversation, isn't it, Art? Whatever we do is to in businesses to create the conversation. And this is what the art, the, we're losing the art of slowly, is, is, is that that the real element of why we have chat boxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, conversation aspect is quite important. And uh, basically, bots are traded in two ways. Uh, one is FAQ style, where you uh, keep asking questions and the bot answers it. While the other one is conversational flow style, where uh, there's a button driven or uh, uh, some sort of suggestive user journey developed, so that you point user from one uh, particular uh, point A to point B and drive through uh, that particular journey through various milestones. So, uh, and uh, these are uh, depicted in text to text bots to buttons, and in voice, it can be just uh, by some suggestive uh, uh, comments by the bot. So, shall we start, uh, Ankit? Started, yeah. Okay. So, uh, the first question uh, we would like to ask to the bot is uh, what is coronavirus? So, here we go. What is coronavirus? Coronaviruses are a large family of viruses which may cause illness in animals or humans. In humans, several coronaviruses are known to cause respiratory infections ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases such as Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, SARS. The most recently discovered coronavirus causes coronavirus disease COVID-19. Great. So I hope everyone uh, would be able to understand uh, what is coronavirus. Yeah, you may choose to ask another question then. So, uh, what is uh, what is COVID nineteen? What is COVID nineteen? What is COVID? COVID-19 is the infectious disease caused by the most recently discovered coronavirus. This new virus and disease were unknown before the outbreak began in Wuhan, China, in December 2019. Yeah, you can see. So uh, the bot uh, did answer the question, uh, but after a couple of uh, chances, because uh, the bot sometimes bot needs more training. This is a demo bot. And also, uh, uh, so we... Uh, We've trained it on what is COVID, and we can add numbers, etc., so that uh, it's more robust and can understand conversation. So this uh, clearly uh, shows us that uh, sometimes bot do fail, but uh, it can be cleared out by retraining. Yeah. What are the symptoms? 
The most common symptoms of COVID-19 are fever, tiredness, and dry cough. Some patients may have aches and pains, nasal congestion, runny nose, sore throat, or diarrhea. These symptoms are usually mild and begin gradually. Some people become infected but don't develop any symptoms and don't feel unwell. Most people, about 80%, recover from the disease without needing special treatment. Around one out of every six people who gets COVID-19 becomes seriously ill and develops difficulty breathing. Older people and those with underlying medical problems like high blood pressure, heart problems or diabetes are more likely to develop serious illness. People with fever, cough and difficulty breathing should seek medical attention. Okay, so uh, uh, we've got the answer about symptoms about coronavirus. Maybe let's ask something different, uh, maybe about pets. Yeah, so this question is from uh, Megan uh, Ben uh, about pets. And uh, the question is, uh, does coronavirus infect pets? I think again, you need to... Uh, there is no uh, evidence that companion animals or pets such as cats and dogs have been infected or could spread the virus that causes COVID-19. Then did you get the answer? Yeah, I've got that, yeah. So uh, we'll do a training video on that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's check, yeah. So that's uh, uh, good. So let's check uh, if it can answer to a statement uh, rather than a question. Yeah. Uh, I'm not feeling well. Stay home if you feel unwell. If you have a fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical attention and call in advance. Calling in advance will allow your health care provider to quickly direct you to the right health facility. This will also protect you and help prevent spread of viruses and other infections. Stay informed on the latest developments about COVID-19. Wonderful. So uh, we have trained the bot using our IP algorithm, and but the training has been limited because this is a demo bot. Uh, so bots can be trained as extensively uh, as required. We can train it from multiple subjects, and they can, they'll be answered. They'll be able to answer a lot of things. Similarly, uh, there's some sort of variations, etc. So if we uh, uh, apply our own IP uh, natural language processing algorithm into this, so it will be able to easily understand all the variations and uh, uh, answer that as well. So Tina is capable of conversing both in text and also in speech. Uh, she can understand different languages as well. We've not uh, uh, demonstrated okay. that here, but uh, if we apply our language translation API to this, uh, then uh, it she will be able to understand a few of the European languages, uh, some Indian languages, and different languages of the world. That's wonderful. That is a great uh, voice bot demo from uh, Gravitas. Uh, and uh, Ars, thank, thanks for the demo. Uh, but. Uh, I would like to ask you a question that uh, can we have a, a bot uh, who can also talk about COVID and who can also talk about chess? Is it possible? Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, we can because uh, it depends on uh, how you want to train it. Uh, so I'll just give you a basic example. So if I started going to school, so in my early days, I learned a level of maths, right? And a level of other science subjects. But at the same time, I'm getting all the information in my head and I'm trying to produce that and provision that and uh, utilize that in my uh, life. So when I uh, reach to advanced stage or uh, next class, so then I accumulate more knowledge, but also in maths and also in science. So it can be trained on multiple uh, subjects and one word can answer different sort of subjects. We can create some segregations and uh, user journey flows, etc. So one bot can answer COVID-19 and it can also answer about chess. And we can do different bots which can answer chess. And in, in, in preparation for this conversation with Ankit, can we have one that tells you only about England's greatest victories over India in cricket? Can we can we have that or <laughs> uh, the greatest victories oh, over yeah. India? Yeah, in preparation for Saturday with my conversation with Ankit. Can we have that or not? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I like, yeah, we need to get that one up. There's, yeah. but here's what's great about this is why we learn about this is all the different ideas we start expanding on what can you do with a chatbot. And it got exciting when you're sitting here and you're watching it. Yeah, a little challenging to use when you're using it remotely. But honestly, yeah. you can play with your phone and pull up chat bots and talk to them. I, I just here's what's weird. I still like the phone, but mm -hmm. I find them curious. Like, how far could I go with this? Right. It becomes a game. But um, but seriously, folks, it's good information that you can provide your people. Great marketing tool. I mean, I, I 
can go on and on about uh, using a chat bot. You know, Sasha needs a chat bot so people can learn about how to guess, guess the next master's move. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, and I'm, I'm excited to, to play the game this time because <laughs> last time I, I really was just more interested in watching than I was playing. But, I'm wondering uh, how can I um, use chat bot for uh, chess site? Oh come on! I don't, I don't, I don't need to uh, to teach people how to play chess. No, all I need is to show people if they're going to try this, how it's going to work, what they have to press, and that's it. Very, very direct functions. That's mm -hmm. all what I need. <laughs> you can, you can uh, look at our site chessstars.com. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell me what's involved in uh, having customized bought to the side, uh, give me a proposal how much it cost, and um, I, I will go from there, yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, if you can provide me your email ID I'll, uh, on chat, maybe I'll uh, get back to you. Uh, sure, the chess I'm side. I'm gonna try to pull up one on my phone, but I think it's yes. not more about teaching people how to play chess, but more about what your game is. What, what your tool is that that's there to yeah. talk to them about how uh, they can guess the next move. But somebody else to sit there and share with them. It's almost like your um, commercial basically, but they might have questions about it. If, if I lose what happens, how many crowns do I have to bet each time? So it's almost like the fact she, mm. yeah. right? but instead they verbally get the talk or, or type their question. Um, but no, I, I find them quite interesting, the new future, right? The new trend um, that will continue to grow. Um, it's just- so Kim, uh, I, I have a question. Uh, we were discussing that the world becomes scary and there are a lot of uh, devices available and things like that. But a question for us, how many bots we have in the world right now? Just a number. Uh, I'll have to spin a bot to uh, get your answer. <laughs> so that but bot can- <laughs> are not aware how we extensively we are using the bots right now and what are the future of bots because they th still think that it's a pretty new thing and they think Alexa is a bot which is which is okay but there are a lot of bots which is not in the hardware form which is in the application form as well so for the viewers we I'm just trying to understand uh, I mean uh, because they also know how we are using the bots and how they are also using the bots extensively which they're not aware about yeah, so uh, there are a lot of bots now uh, working in the world. Uh, and uh, I think in the last uh, seven to eight years, this has picked up. And uh, now it's picking up more. Uh, so in the last, I think, five to six years, there was some awareness about uh, predictive analysis and machine learning algorithms. And then uh, the bot business has picked up. Uh, there are a lot of bots which are being used in uh, customer uh, journey. So basically engaging the customers. But there's a lot of opportunity in terms of uh, optimizing the productivity uh, internally in the organizations uh, by supporting employees to do their BAU jobs so that uh, uh, those sort of things can be done by the board and they can con concentrate on uh, the uh, more innovative and uh, you know, like uh, some things which can help the organization. So there are different type of bots uh, uh, in the world. So there are assistants which can assist in a particular function and can provide information, can provide information about your products, can inform, provide information about your product catalog, or uh, take some sort of data requests uh, from the users and process that, and maybe uh, engage in appointments, uh, get the appointments sorted, and uh, take user queries. Uh, uh, so a lot of times uh, people get frustrated because the user journey is not getting completed. They buy a product and then they have some questions and it's very difficult to ask those questions because the turnaround time is large. So uh, asking those sort of questions uh, uh, is something which uh, bots can handle. So customers can ask bots questions and they, that can be logged into system or maybe bots can respond to that depending upon the type of training we want to provide to the bot. Uh, the bot can also assist very uh, importantly in taking feedbacks feedback loop is uh, i've seen most of the organizations uh, feedback loop uh, hardly gets completed and uh, the major problem is that the last part of the journey uh, is try is being managed uh, through some sort of applications but if there's a prompt from someone uh, immediately, then you can immediately provide the feedback. And uh, this is where voice bots can be very uh, important because it kicks your eardrums. It's the basic uh, sort of uh, language which we humans are accustomed to. 
so we speak and uh, we interact in that way so uh, that is something which can it can help as well and then there are a lot of things which can be done internally like supporting all the staff uh, uh, internally about improvising productivity to doing all the first line and second line sort of support uh, work by bots uh, we've got a very uh, niche bot uh, which uh, sits on google uh, calendars and uh, can uh, arrange meetings uh, by just names so basically i can say i want to arrange a meeting with kim ankit uh, and uh, uh, the bot will go and uh, try to find the information uh, in our calendars and suggest the slots which are available so this can be useful for like uh, if we are trying to arrange a meeting with three or four people uh, we can do it on calendars but if there's a large uh, gathering like five to seven people it becomes really difficult to go through the calendars try to find a common time get the room meeting room sorted so just say to the bot uh, in uh, 30 seconds or 40 seconds you'll get the meeting arranged you can update it later and those sort of things and uh, and uh, we have uh, we have lynch and he's from uh, family dollar store how we can create a bot to to shop on uh, dollar store and how we can create more sales on uh, through bot is it possible to do some kind of uh, uh, viral communication uh, for our users and uh, share the best offers and also understand if someone is visiting a website so they know that what kind of uh, stuff they uh, that particular user uh, based on their behavior uh, i mean we can uh, we can procure for them yeah, yeah so bots can be used uh, uh, for uh, managing the e-commerce journey so basically uh, taking your orders adding to the cart getting your payments sorted and uh, sending the notifications after payments uh, to the customer and uh, the company and thereafter uh, there's an important bit after that because uh, there's some service pro service provision after that sometimes or uh, there are some uh, requirements of uh, updates about where the particular uh, packages and those sort of things so all those all those things can be done uh, through push notifications generated by bot it can be uh, uh, communicated through the messenger in facebook messenger so uh, facebook messenger bot can be handed there or it can be done through a website bot as well you can push notifications to users on their on their email ids on their numbers or whatever information is available to us and it can be all automated through bots len uh, what do you think uh, well, I, I got in on the conversation late, so uh, I'm not I'm not sure about uh, our platform. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to have to learn a lot more. But any way to promote the store to be able to benefit uh, mm -hmm. Money Masters is going to be a good thing. Yeah, so, and, and uh, but they're cool. It's cool technology that. Um, I Kim, what do you think? We need to do a quick uh, one more demo for. Can we do uh, one more demo? I, I would love. To sit and watch one more demo. Thank you. I, I, I just think they're cool. You, you know, yeah. very informative and helpful. Certainly. You might replace me with a chat bot. Then what? Uh, <laughs> that would be, oh my gosh, we'll replace me with a chat bot. Um, the, the chat bots guide you to, it's like your marketing tool, right? But it's almost like having almost that human there um, mm -hmm. that is kind of guiding you. You can ask it questions and it's going to kind of tell you and get you there. Sometimes you have to write, know how to write, write or ask the right question. But um, for the most part, they're self-explanatory. Here we go. This is fun. So I'll get, you can uh, ask questions here. Yeah. So, what is COVID? Okay, so let's click on what is COVID. COVID-19 is the infectious disease caused by the most recently discovered coronavirus. This new virus and disease were unknown before the outbreak began in Wuhan, China, in December 2019. I'm not feeling well. Say that again. Uh, I think for the board. Stay good. home if you feel unwell. If you have a fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical attention and call in advance. Calling in advance will allow your health care provider to quickly direct you to the right health facility. This will also protect you and help prevent spread of viruses and other infections. Stay informed on the latest developments about COVID-19. 
Yeah. So maybe there's a lot. And uh, these, uh, this bot is specifically linked for your benefit, uh, has been designed for COVID-19 information. And we have sourced this uh, information from uh, different uh, bodies which are uh, providing information to different parts of the world. So, for example, we've got a WHO uh, specific instance of so, uh, all content through WHO powered through Tina. And uh, for USA, we've got uh, uh, CDC plus WHO content. For India, we've got Ministry of Family and Health and Welfare plus WHO content. And we are constantly updating this content so that uh, the most accurate information is uh, provided uh, to people so that there's no misinformation. Got it. So the question was, could we use that for IBM.TV? Um, we have it on IBM.TV. I'm sorry, I, I, don't, I, mean, I don't mean IBM. I mean for the for uh, Family Dollar Store. Yeah. Uh, family Dollar Store. Good. Yes. Anyway, so, yeah, we can do that for uh, the COVID nineteen bot. Yes, we can definitely do oh, that. Uh, definitely. Uh, def uh, apart from COVID nineteen, I mean, what about a uh, bot for dollar store so that uh, people can just talk about the bot and they can have uh, they can shop around. It's yeah, yeah. almost it's almost like an like doing an advertisement. Um, yeah, but but making it interactive so that people exactly. can ask questions. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the big issue is so you wouldn't want. They can ask. Uh, so Lynn, Lynn uh, sorry to interrupt. They can ask that. Uh, do we have a napkin or do we? Do you have? Uh, uh, I mean, Min minion napkins. Minion napkins. napkins. Minion napkins. So so, but but it would have to be Kimberly because because her voice sounds so much better than my voice. Oh, sounds. thank you. I want to be. I, w I want to be on the minions show one day. <laughs> Um, <laughs> y'all didn't get to see, didn't get to see the private birthday card I gave Ann Kit for his birthday yeah. with the minion video. <laughs> really? Did you really do that? Yes. Oh wow! <laughs> yes. I have to give you a handy with me right now. Hmm. So, um, so anyway, um, I uh, so yeah, but what is great about the dollar store is what their their heart. Mm -hmm. And the mission is to close that gap between poverty and sustainability. And mm -hmm. I, you know, and I want to thank you guys very much. And maybe we can help get a chat bot on there mm -hmm. uh, to make it easier for people. Because sometimes there are some people who are colorblind or can't read, um, or, or are handicapped or disabled, like I was for a very long time. I couldn't use my arms or legs, and I had to learn how to speak into a computer. So sometimes, you know, the, the a chat bot would be cool for that. So, um, so, but, but the dollar store, Lynn has changed his name from the shepherd family dollar store to the family, family dollar, store. dollar store. Right. And it, you can find it on the big green dot on IBM.TV. Yep. And, uh, what is nice is that, um, they, uh, let's see right there, folks. Can you see it? Oh, I didn't share. Um, if you take a look, you'll see it's as easy as hitting the big green dot. And oh, we were looking at COVID. <laughs> so, usually the big green dot on the home page. There you there go. There you go. There you go. So, uh, but first we put your life and, and health first. And we have a COVID bot for you. But if you hit this big green button or that big round circle, you can go straight to the family dollar store, which what happened? It's still and, going. And if you're colorblind, they were, um, somebody was smart enough to make it round. So, and if you're shape blind and colorblind, then you're in trouble unless you can read. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah, accessibility, accessibility guidelines are quite important. Yeah. But, but the thing is, is what's important at Money Masters, our mission was to teach financial literacy to people. And um, one of the things I learned in my journey uh, with Nick when we interviewed all the world's richest and pe people uh, mm -hmm. is it's not just about how you make your money, it's how you manage it, right? What you do with it, how you spend it, what you spend it on, how you save it, how you invest it. My, my other thing is, is I want to teach people that don't forget you have to pay taxes and you, we need to teach our children that as well. And what you donate, because that's very important as well is giving forward, even though, we, you know, all of these things add up, you need to teach people how to budget it. Right. And live, maybe not not live within your means, but learn to plan to get what you want. Right. I was always taught live within your means. It was the greatest moment in my life when I realized I could plan to get what I want. Mm -hmm. 
right? Exactly. That's exactly. when that's when you go, wow, I can get my dream. So, but what is great about the dollar store is it fits everything that Nick and I talk about saving money. And I can go to the dollar store and I can buy the collagen mask that I get over counter for twenty dollars. I can get it for two dollars. Okay, I can great. go to the dollar store and get that anti line cream, the exact same cream that I buy on Amazon for 60, I can get it for $2. And if I buy those things and all the other little essentials that I need, including minion napkins, right? I'm going to get a lot of savings. I'm going to add it up to $25 and get free shipping, but I'm also going to get bonus dollars. So all of this makes sense to me for financial smartness, financial, yep. Yes, right. I, I don't have to go anywhere. Time is money. I'll, every one of us that are entrepreneurs, time is money. Every hour I go out, I add up how much time am I losing? I hate saying it that way, but that's how I do it. Um, when Nick and I are on set and we know that it costs us a thousand dollars a minute to film, every time somebody's late or somebody's not doing what they're supposed to do, my brain goes 1,001, 1,000. Time is money. So you save time by not having to go there. You save gas by not having to drive to the brick and mortar because you can order it. It's delivered to your home and it's within days. It's not, you know, weeks or anything. it's just within a day or two that you'll get your delivery unless you uh, live where Lynn lives and then you got to go pick it up at the post office. But, um, but other than that, I think it's a great way and great, uh, message that we're trying to send out to people is to save money. But the great thing that they do is they donate 50% to our money master financial literacy program, mm -hmm. which I think is a beautiful mission. And if you look at the dollar store, it's not cheap stuff. It's all name brand. I can't, I, I'm blown away when I go in there, Johnson and Johnson, right? Baby stuff. Um, the, the Genesis for, for Pampers, Wimmer. Papers, Pampers, Pampers. Yeah. Um, but it's a lot of name brand uh, that you, they also carry CBD and they can ship CBD. And we've got other people who are in the business angry because they're like, well, PayPal has shut us down because we're CBD. All of these people. Yeah. And there you go. You can get the CBD patches, you can get the little tablets. It's with, all there. And with it's lidocaine. Pretty, right. Because the dollar store figured it out. They figured out how they can sell it and not be shut down. So that's what you got to do. You got to be smart. But the dollar store figured out how to do it, how and why it works. So, but remember, it's it's not just about making money; it's about managing money. Yeah. Yeah. Not only from perspective. Sorry, go on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, not only from a commercial perspective, but uh, 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 with the kind of uh, intentions uh, which are behind this dollar store. So we're proud to be associated with us uh, uh, such. Uh, uh, company and uh, uh, we we'll like to work on if there's a possibility we'll like to work on uh, something good for dollar store. Wow, uh, you hear that? <laughs> so I heard that, and so so what I can do is have somebody get in touch with you. Um, okay. Okay. From from uh, the, from the parent, um, and you're you're located in England. Is that where you are? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so they're located on the west coast. So you've got about an eight hour difference. Yeah. Um, be, between you and them, but you you guys can work that out. If Ian can, can work it out living in New Delhi, yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> you, you certainly can work it out with uh, with the people at the corporate headquarters. So there Definitely. you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll give my email, email connection to Ankit uh, so that. Thank you. Yeah. Bots will help, and bots are going to get out there and and help us market. And thank you so much. This is beautiful because when you see people connecting dots and wanting to help them work with each other, that's what we're all about in IBM TV is trying to make that happen global, right? Not just here in the U S or in India or in England or Canada or Malaysia, just we're working together and yeah, we are connected world. Yeah. But, yeah. but when you wouldn't see this just in everywhere, it'd be hard to find this. This is why we do this as part of Wednesdays is about sharing businesses. And I, and I tell you one more thing. Arch, everyone knows about WWW. No one knows about WWT. What's that? W, what's that? <laughs> Worldwide television. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it keeps coming with your interesting abbreviations. Yeah. <laughs> and kid always kept WWT. We are now on WWT Worldwide Television. <laughs> See, Ann Kit, has got a good sense of humor. That's because he was born on June seventh, and, yes. and if you understand, 
Okay, okay. belated happy birthday, Ankit. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we got we got another June seventh baby here. Uh, Who else was born on June seventh? Ah, uh, Liz. <laughs> so we got two June seventh babies. Yep. Late birthday. Day, yeah. A good day to be born. Um, I, mean, I, I, I would ask the question, how old are you? But uh, in which year you were born? <laughs> That's a trick bot. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I was born in 1875. So you figure that one out. <laughs> I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Now, now, I was born somewhere between between 1965 and 1925. So you can figure that one out too. I got it. <laughs> now, anyway, I, you know it's funny you say that because a friend of mine, uh, the the clerk at court or, or the marriage license place. Uh, typed up the certificate wrong, and she typed in 1800 and whatever for the, her birth, right? So, but she didn't notice it. She thought it said 19, and so when she went to get married, the priest was looking at it, and he goes, "Oh my God, you're old." That was that is funny. <laughs> he was like, he was looking at her like she must be some kind of miracle or something. So, and let me tell you, uh, I mean, quickly, uh, the Gravitas AI bot, uh, they have given the answer and uh, they have a code which says 1945. 1945. What does that mean? Oh, for the, for the, uh, the year of birth, is it? <laughs> oh, oh. No, I was actually 1944. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, bot was close. Bot was close. So, so, and so people people will look at me and say, I actually had this conversation, which I need to relay, relay to you later from the former dean of the University of Pittsburgh, um, who has written on startups, and we want to talk about that, um, that. maybe offline. But yeah. but um, you know, um, uh, people. He asked me the question. He said. He said. Do you really want to continue to work um, or do you want to work because you have to? And I lost a business in 2009, as you may know, and I lost multi seven figures when I lost the business. So, um, yeah, that was not fun. But anyway, but the point is, I never would have stopped. And I, I told Kimberly this. and I don't think I've said this. I met I met Colonel Sanders when he was 85 and he was starting a new business at age 85. I mean, think of that. Um, and, and he said to me, he said, he said, son, and I was son, I was 31 at the time. He said, he said, son, I've got another 15 years of good business in, uh, left in me and I'm going to have fun doing it. So, so I think it's all, it's all up here. I mean, think, think he started Kentucky fried when he was either 65 or 66. Yeah. He started late Yeah, because yeah. they built, he had a restaurant. And then they built the interstate, which took all his his, his drive-in traffic away from him, um, and and he had to do something. So that's when he started Kentucky Fried Chicken. And it's still going. And, and it is still you going. Can still drive it's through still and get Kentucky Fried Chicken because it's got drive-through. So um, so he he was smart. He he wasn't just smart. He he was persistent. But I heard he was very nice. He was extremely nice. Everybody, everybody in the uh, in Louisville airport when we got off of the plane, everybody knew him. He knew everyone by first name. Um, I mean, it was amazing. And at age eighty, he had offered me his limousine because I was there looking at real estate, um, and I couldn't take it because in those days we didn't have something that looks like this. Um, you know, we had to go to a phone booth and make a phone call, and yeah. and yeah, and and so. Yeah, you, these two guys are too young to remember what phone booths look like. <laughs> oh, but you know what? In Tennessee, they still have them in the airport. Yeah. I, I took pictures of them. They did still, you really? Yeah, I got did pictures you? of them. Mm -hmm. The last yeah. time I was in Tennessee. Yep. They, they have, go ahead. A phone booth. That, like, you what's happening. If you, if you go to any co working space right now, uh, 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 a good co working space, they have a booth which is only for talking. I mean, you can go out and you can use your telephone and talk because you don't want to disturb to anyone else. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
That's yeah. a cell phone booth. <laughs> yeah. Cell phone booth, yeah. Well, but they, they started, they stopped spending the money on actual booths. And they started just simply hanging them on the wall mm -hmm. or, or putting those things that sort of covered your head so or that if you were talking in the right, wrapped around you a little bit. But but so the funny thing was, I mean, he really wanted me to he wanted me to drop him off at home, pick up my friend who was and I couldn't get a hold up because I, I, I didn't have a cell phone in those days, obviously. So and he was walking backwards faster because he kept saying, come on, son, come on, son, take me home and use my, my limousine. And, and, and I couldn't keep up with the man. He was walking backwards and I was walking, I was walking as fast as I could forwards. So, you know, and it was, it was, come on, son, come on. Hi, Joe. Hi, Sam. Hi, and Charlie. Come on, son. You got it. And, and uh -huh. he's, there he was walking backwards. So there is something to be learned from, from, from somebody like that. Um, yeah. I, 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 but you know what? What's great, cool is, is that I think each and every one of us who are entrepreneurs, including the young ones down below, I'm one of them actually. I'm as old as they are, but including the young ones down below, uh, we can all say that we've all had challenges, right? Yep. So, and we, part of what we were talking about today was uh, failures, which yeah. maybe we can make a bot, not just a show, but Hey, you know what? We all go through struggles. What's yours today? Um, because I think a lot of people are, are struggling right now. I, you know, don't want to put a down or anything, but I, I got a report that you know the suicide rates are very, very high right now, which mm -hmm. is something they, yeah. they started yeah. to try to curb. But maybe we can put something out there because there's not enough um, centers right now. But um, but there's so much positive that we can do that we can offer that positive light to other people. Right. And and show them that there is light that out here. And and I think that's what's great about these stories that we hear. Especially like the, the one about Colonel Sanders is always my favorite. Well, you know what J JC Penny said he was 91 years old and he was losing his, his uh eyesight. And somebody said said to him, um, uh, well, Mr. Penny, um, isn't it a shame you're losing your vision? And he <laughs> And, and and his response was no no sir I'm not losing my vision I'm losing my sight uh, and 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 he was he was still working at 91 even though he was losing his eyesight there was a, there was a, I've known two lawyers in my life um, I've known no more lawyers than two but these two both were working over age 100. Yeah, I think wow. struggles are quite important. Struggles and challenges are quite important part of your journey because unless you have that uh, or you face a challenge or struggle, you won't excel uh, to the next stage because uh, there has to be some experience of uh, falling through and then learning and uh, then starting upright. And every mm -hmm. time you face a challenge and a struggle in your life, you usually realize that it, it has made you a better human. And also, in terms of professional experiences, unless we get some challenges, uh, we uh, don't know what to resolve. Yeah? But, well, but I agree with that. I agree with that. That's and I, I agree with it too. But think of how many people um, it, they get faced with challenges mm -hmm. and they turn the other way because they haven't learned the lesson that that challenges teach you lessons that you that you then learn and you know how to overcome those. Yeah. Um, so and there are too many people who don't learn that unfortunately it's, it's a it's definitely one of those things that you got to ask yourself um but you, know, you got to learn how to strat do strategies and prioritize and you got to teach that to your children that there's always an answer right mm -hmm. always an answer just like we google everything today there's always an answer right and, and like uh, we were learning today you either say you can or you can't either way you're going to be right and mm -hmm. You just right. got to take that positive and move it forward. And I think that's what, what I like about working with entrepreneurs is most of them have that spirit, right? It's kind of, you know, think about it. I mean, I see so many entrepreneurs that can't, you know, like keep losing and haven't given up yet, right? And mm -hmm. they don't. It's a, it's a day in day in uh, both are uh, serial uh, experienced entrepreneurs uh, still uh, still eager and passionate to work on uh, getting their businesses right. 
Yeah. yeah, that's right. And you know, Zach. Hi, Zach. How are you doing? Zach's our buddy, out and about guy um, with yeah. IBM TV. He said he reminds us. Ray uh, Croker was told that McDonald's would never catch on out of his town, and look what he did. <laughs> Yeah, I, Tell that man, no. <laughs> I think he means Ray Kroc, not Ray Crocker, but that's okay. Yeah, but Ray Kroc, but no, but that's all right. Yeah. I text wrong all the time, and you can't back, you can't edit these. The you can't go yeah. back. No, and sure, edit. sure. So, um, I, I know I'm I'm learning to be very careful if I post because you can't. Um, but anyway, but no, he's right. I mean, th there are so many people who are told they no way that's going to work. And I mean, I, I can't count the time I hear that. I hear it all the time. There's no way that's going to work. But you know what? The reason is, is it's never been done and people can't see beyond what's not before them. Right. And they don't understand that. And until you have had your mind stretched, mm -hmm. Right. You will never know. So until you have pushed past those boundaries yourself and learn that you can achieve these things, you, you won't know. you're always going to sit back and say that's impossible as opposed to that's possible. So yeah, sometimes it's just important to just uh, stay uh, like uh, calm, get one step back and think about the wider horizon. And uh, uh, because when challenges appear like uh, uh, you get into a spiral sometimes, uh, thinking about the same thing, how to resolve and how to resolve, how to resolve. And then when you step back, take a deep breath, calm down for some time. I think a friend of mine, a, a friend of mine says it diff a little differently, but it means exactly the same thing. Sometimes you have to slow down yeah. to speed to speed up. And and I think that's, that's a very powerful statement. That that's a relevant statement. Um, and and to what Kimberly was saying. Uh, I think it was Jim Rohn who said, you know, uh, go as far as you can see. And when you get there, you can see farther. Yeah. You don't stop. You know, yeah. it, it's um, they're always the, when you get to the top of the mountain, once there. And in my life, it's always been the foothill of the next mountain. I'm never, I'm never going to reach. But somebody had answered that for me well, because you're always in the middle, which is a good place to be. Right. So, yeah, so there's there's so many ways to look at this, but they're all positive, the power of positive thinking. And that's what I enjoy about this is on my cup, right? The power of positive thinking. Absolutely. And I uh, uh, question about, uh, for power of positive thinking. What do you think of uh, positive thinking is, uh, I mean, uh, to balance it out, a good thinking or a good listener? What, what would you pick? I think, I, 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 I frankly, I, I think people were given two ears for a reason and only one mouth. Yeah. Okay. So, so you need to spend a lot of your time listening. Um, and, and you learn a lot by listening. And a lot yeah. of people, one, one sad thing is a lot of people, when they have a conversation, what do they want to do? They want to talk about themselves because to them, that's the, that's the most interesting subject that they have. And and it, I find it's fascinating if you just simply start asking people questions. Um, I've had people tell me things that I thought, oh, my God, I never thought I would hear somebody say that. And you just let them talk. Yeah. And, you know, um, one of the things I learned with on Nick's show, the, the greatest gift I, I gained in life was to be able to listen real hard, even though I talk a lot. Um, I. I have a gift of being able to listen and that has pulled me out being able to allow me to ask the right questions moving forward because it's easy to sit on a tv show and your mind wanders right it is easy mm -hmm. to work and your mind wanders and um but to sit there and force yourself to have to listen but then i realized all these people had great stories oh my god why would i mm -hmm. want my mind so i learned to turn this off for you know like we would sit and film eight hours worth in one day and I learned to turn this off and just set it on the thing and listen. Yeah, listening is like uh, totally, totally important. Uh, sorry. It yeah. is. It is. Yeah, it's quite important because uh, yeah. thinking on your own is something which everyone can do, but uh, getting the life experience or the uh, work experience or the different sort of experiences that different people have, because every user journey is very different and there are a lot of experiences flowing like uh, uh, around us. So learning through that is really uh, something which is very important. Oh yeah, and also I believe that uh, okay. listening and uh, listening also add uh, add one more skill to your uh, I mean uh, skill set, which is patience. Because mm -hmm. if you are 
if you if you are good listener you have patience and vice versa if you are patient you are good listener and i think sasha was sasha is one of the good listeners we have so let me All ask you a question is this you never learn anything by talking only by listening, listening. okay that's, that's right. number one number two the problem with listening here is that um Sometimes you listen to uh, people on for a conversation, and sometimes it tends to be on a way much lower level that you would like to accept and listen and to hear and to absorb. And then you have a great dilemma: Are you still continue there and keep listening and more listening, yeah. or you just run away and just forget about all that? And that's sometimes you have to make tough decisions. Sorry to say so, but that's, uh, you know what? I'm at the age and uh, time in my life where I can say anything what I want without, <laughs> without uh, sort of being afraid to offend somebody, to all oh, these people do better, all oh, those people do better. I don't care. I'm going to say exactly <laughs> what I feel and what I want to say to so my friends. So, so I was going to ask. I was going to say, here we are, four of us um, talking. Okay, and who was listening? Sasha was listening the whole time. Oh, he always does. And He's he listening. He wasn't always, saying a word. He's always down, and all you see is his eyes sometimes. You know, that's what he's doing. He's so listening. I'm like, so I'll uh, look no, right I'll, my no I'll, I'll tell you what I'm doing. First of all, I'm checking my email, and I've just got <laughs> fantastic talk. I've got fantastic. Uh, I ended my trade today. That's what I did. But at the same time, I was, you know, it get, doesn't take a lot of my attention, really, because you know, when you did it so many times, you did it like uh, automation. And uh, maybe maybe I'll share my uh, trading technique with uh, people here on uh, IBM TV. Can we do I, that? I would love that. I would. Yeah, I, I feel that. I feel that 99% of the people they don't they don't really understand what it's all about. They just. Um, They've heard something from somebody and they don't understand what the hell they heard and from whom they heard. <laughs> and if they don't, if the best way for them is, in fact, ignore the stock market altogether. No, don't even touch. Get your money, go to Las Vegas and uh, have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we but, go. When you start a startup, what do you do? Get your money and go to Vegas. <laughs> when you got money to That's the best way money, you can go do it. Yeah. You, you know what? <laughs> I want to tell you something. You have a great horse in Las Vegas. The more I think about it, the faster I will get on the plane and will go just right there. I'll meet you. Uh, yeah. as, soon as, as soon as they lift everything, I, we, I practically, I felt like, I told Nick, I felt like I lived in Vegas. I never liked it, to be honest with you. I hated going, but the business was always there. We were always doing TV shows there. 